Well, you've just come back from a great fishing trip in your boat, but there's one thing you've got to do, and that's clean it and put it away ready for the next time. This is a procedure I do with my boat. I know some people run without straps, but I've got two sets of straps on my boat. I've towed it three and a half thousand miles, so I've done a lot of towing. I'm going to look after these straps, take them off, spray them with some WD-40. They'll be good for next time. I use some pieces of carpet on mine, just stops that rubbing and chafing when you go over bouncing bad roads, got plenty of those in England, it doesn't rub through the gel coat. One here and one down the bottom of the hole. My rubbing marks, put some carpet on them. Don't forget to put your running board away with your lights, keep this dry. I put mine in the garage, don't leave it on the boat. Absolutely, the most important job you've got to do is flush that engine out, get the salt out of the engine and put fresh through it. I'm doing that using these muffs which go over, depending on your outboard, those two gaps there. Make sure it's covering both those inlet holes. And you can tell that I've moved that and now I've got the water coming out here. Make sure you have a strong outflow for your outboard engine and then you start the wash down. I'm just using a bucket of soapy water and a sort of medium bristle uh, broom. That enables me to have the stretch, I can climb up on the top. Now if you do during the summer get the chance you should put a good wax coat on your or polish on your boat and you'll find that the muck and bait is much easier to get off if you've got a good coat of a wax polish on there first. There are obviously marine um, different makes you can get, but I just use regular car one. And it doesn't hurt the decals. If you've got decals on your boat, it doesn't hurt those at all. Um, that's what I find anyway. But what I will do uh, is un well underneath, I spray right underneath on all the glass. I don't want any sort at all. I do. The jockey will, because that could have been in the water. Sometimes it goes under, sometimes it doesn't. My specialist trick is ramming that hose pipe right down the centre shaft, the spine of the trailer, because I think the salt water sits in that bottom half, especially if you just have it horizontal. Now flush it all out, go up underneath the mud guards, around the wheels, spray out under there, because the nuts and screws and bolts will rust out otherwise on the mud guard. Your mud guard flies off. The inside of the wheels I give a good spray to, most important I feel, is spraying up underneath the axle across where the suspension bolts are. I've got six on each suspension unit there. I, you know, I, th I think you, you can't almost spray too much fresh water there. That's been underneath the boat. I do my rollers, hose down the inside of the boat to soften up any muck. Obviously, you've got a fishing boat. This is a fishing boat, not a pleasure boat. It's going to have bait in there. Um, so you're going to need to drain that water out. You can do this by taking out the bung, which I do anyway, because I don't want rainwater going in there. But I've also got my bilge pump running. So you can see any water that I wash down uh, while I'm doing the deck clean down there can be taken out by the bilge pump. But if you take out the bung, as we say, look, whoosh, it all comes out. That will drain the bilge and it will also stop the bilge pump working, as you can see there. But... If you leave your boat on a wet morning, you've obviously got to have the bung in the boat, therefore make sure your bilge pump is working. I have mine on a trailer right outside my house, no problem. Put the nut and any adjustable span hour that you use back in the same place so you always know where it is. I put the fuel pipe out of the way there, I don't want any salt water in there. While you've got that soapy water, you might as well wash everything else you've got in the boat. It could be, I don't know, bait buckets, coolers, that type of thing. Uh, anything that's had salt on it or in the salt environment, give it a wash down. I start at the front in my cabin. I've got a quarter deck open cabin, so I've got loads of space in there as well. I didn't have doors put on my cabin when I had it built. I wanted open space because obviously I do shark fishing. I need plenty of space. Now, look here. They may only be leaves to you, but they could be disaster to your bilge. They could get trapped on the grill. The little 
filter that, you know, as another piece, fishing line. Anything to do with fishing line, snips of fishing line, can get stuck in the build, but as a bead there, you never know what you want, a plastic bead. So pick up any, as many bits and pieces as you can. Then what I do is I'm going to take the strain off of the car there. I'm going to wind up the jockey wheel as high as I can, which will put an incline on the deck and keep it sloping backwards. So there's a bit of a, a slope there that will push all the water back down to the bilge that I've done up in there. Look, the, the deck is absolutely clean, sides are clean, the water's gone down through there, but if it's laying in any particular area, I put the bung in just to show you this, and I now take the bung out again. There you go, that's draining the very last of the bilge, clean, and hopefully no smells when I go in future. Next, put the engine up on tilt because I want to reverse the boat back in position. I put the locking bar down there for traveling and just barely pinch it. Don't force it down, otherwise you're gonna mess up your hydraulics. When it's all drained out, the last of the bilge, I can reverse my boat back into position exactly where I keep it at my house. Now listen, you could have them moored, you could have them at a club. I personally like my boat outside my house, so hopefully it doesn't get pilfered, stolen or broken. I also take the pressure off my tyres by jacking up my axle here. As you can see, I'm going to jack the axle right up so that the wheels actually have no pressure, no pressure at all in them, or on them. Obviously, they've got pressure in them, but I don't want them sitting on the same stone. I mean, you could jack it up and move the wheel around and put it back down again, but I was given a tip by another guy, and he said just jack them up and leave them on axle stands. Then I release the jack, it goes down onto the axle stands, but there's no pressure on the tyre. If I don't use the boat for some time again, no problem with the tyres, one hopes. I also support there the spine of the trailer, which I don't think anybody else does. That stops it bowing, and then I can just put minimal stress on the jockey wheel. I actually wind the jockey wheel down until such time as the strain is taken by that piece of wood. So we're all clear, we're all washed down. Now what we do with the engine, bring it up on tilt, undo the holding bar, lower it down, and this is so that the oil in the engine is all nice and sort of, I'm going to say it's on a horizontal plane as, as per running the boat, and that's exactly what it's doing. Little block of wood underneath helps support it. Don't overforce it because you're pushing back, and then make sure you switch your battery off. If you've done and you've finished with all your electronics, switch your battery off for safety. I've got a cover on mine. I haven't got any of those really nice Yamaha covers. I never did get one of those. I've made mine out of a piece of canvas and stitched it up. And uh, might not look pretty, but it does the job and it just keeps the worst of the weather off my engine. Because let's face it, the engine is very often the most expensive part and is probably worth more than the boat. Now, the most probably, the first important thing is flushing that engine out. The second most important thing I find is getting any residue, look in there, of salt water. Now watch, just in there, there's salt water in the bearings, even though I've hose piped it out, there it is. Now I have actually messed up a set of bearings by not doing my next procedure for about three or four months and they rusted out. I was shocked. They were probably those cheap Chinese bearings, but just that little bit of residue of salt water resting in the bottom of the bearing does actually, or it's enough to rust and put pits in it, and then I don't want any problems at all. I take out the emulsified grease, which is caused by warm bearings going into water after a long tow, because I do tow my boat some distances, sometimes four or five hours. Put it on some newspaper. That way you can fold it all up. You don't get grease over everything. Your clothes, the gravel, it goes everywhere. You can screw it up in some newspaper. Pump in extra grease, I just got the old fashioned grease. Now just look, that's pushed out some more salt water. So you'll see those little ridges, little little bobbly bits there, that's grease that's been pushed out by the new grease going on the inside of the hub. I then get the surplus wiped off of water, just a little dab of water coming out there. There's now no water in there. The grease has pushed it out from the inside out. I put the hub cap over the top, wipe it clean, so it's, it's ready for use next time. Try and keep the grease clean. I just use old bits of toweling 
And there we go, hopefully trouble-free bearings when you are towing. Finally, secure your boat because your insurance might not be covered, if, even if you leave it in your house with no lock on. So make sure it's secured and or alarmed, you're all ready to go. Finally, to put it to bed, cover the old girl up. You can have covers made. I've just made this one out of a piece of tarpaulin. I rope it off. It's been through horrendous storms. I have another one I put over the top. And there you go. The job's done. It is laborious, but if you want trouble-free fishing next time, trust me, this is probably the way to do it properly. So the worst of the job is done. The boat's clean. It's put away ready for next time. There's only one thing to do. That's get myself a glass of hot mulled wine and look at a totally awesome fishing video with a great boat.